Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Linode. You can build it on Linode. Get started today with $100 in free credit for Mac Voices listeners and viewers at linode.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we have a special show this time around, as it is whenever we get a chance to visit a user group. And now we're doing, it seems like a lot more virtually because they're having virtual meetings and makes life easy. Uh, our, our guest speaker today is Mr. Adam Anks. Adam, welcome. It's great to have you as always. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you so much for doing these. Oh, hey, this this is always a blast because we get to hang out with our people. And this time we get to hang out with the people from the Apple Cider Mac user group. Apple Cider, thank you for having us. It's great to see you all. Yeah, and, I, and I told them to mute their mic, so there's no, hey, but don't worry about it. Um, so, Adam, gee, I don't know what we're going to talk about. I mean, you know, there's like there's no Not news. to a 7.2, oh, 0.2, as we said. I mean, you know, oh. very important update. Everyone should go and get it immediately because it fixes a battery life problem. And, you know, if the ECG app won't launch for you, those are, those are the, the two fixes. And I, okay, we're done with Watch OS 7.0.2. Yeah, it's going to be a short show. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and, but that, you know, listen, that is good uh, kind of P- PSA kind of thing uh, because the battery life issues have been, I haven't had them, but I know some people have. And the EEG thing definitely want to have that working. So Well, and yeah. actually, not to, not to steal the, the focus from what we're going to talk about and focus on Watch OS, but, uh, but there actually has been another issue that. That, um, that we were tracking a little bit with people who are having trouble um, with either data disappearing from health or workouts, not having GPS, GPS tracks. And um, Apple has acknowledged this and has a, has, a, has a fairly lengthy support note on it. Um, unfortunately, the solution is you back up your iPhone, you back up your watch, you unpair the watch, you um, erase the iPhone, um, and then you restore the whole kit and caboodle. Um, and people have said, yeah, it takes 90 minutes. It's annoying as all get out, but it does solve the problem. So if you're seeing problems with watch OS, um, and, you know, especially health data or workout data that unfortunately may still be the solution. We don't know if watch OS 7.0.2 resolves that, um, Apple did not say anything about it in the release notes. So, okay, now we can finish with that. Out. Yeah, and I should have said this in the pre-show too to our to our friends at Apple Cider. If anybody has um, a question or whatever while we're going, just unmute your mic and shout at us. That's that's more than welcome. Um, I'll try to ask you for questions, but if you have something that you just can't wait, you know, please don't hesitate. So we have just come off of the high speed event um, yesterday as we as we record this, and. The big focus was HomePod 2 and the iPhones, the iPhones 12. Um, <laughs> so why don't we? I, where do you want to start, Adam? I'll let you let let's, you guide us. Let's 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 follow Apple's lead and dispense with the HomePod Mini. Not because there's anything wrong with it, but just because there's not that much interesting about it. I mean, it's 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 a great little device as far as we can tell, but it doesn't really do hardly anything different from the bigger. HomePod. It's just about half the half the height and two thirds the width. Um, it's a little more spherical, a little rounder. Um, I really thought it should have a little slot so you could put a, a flower in. Um, it looked a little like a vase. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, the HomePod Mini Apple started their their event and just jumped right in. Um, and the big news, of course, is the HomePod Mini is only ninety nine dollars. So it brings all of the capabilities of the HomePod or almost all the capabilities um, and probably pretty good sound quality. No one really knows until we get our hands on it um, to the line with uh, with a much lower price. Hey, I, boy, I, you know, I think that's underselling it. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I was kind of excited for this because I, first of all, it puts the, it puts the Apple ecosystem even more places in my home. Yes. And so that that to me is a big thing. I think that as I said, that that price, the ninety nine dollar price, really makes a huge difference because, you know, like uh, so we have we have two home pods right now. Um, we have one sort of downstairs and one in the bedroom, and um, and they're great and we use we use them fairly heavily, but they're not always where you want them to be and. Sometimes, you know, like in the bedroom, it's a little less interesting. I mean, we're not like we're listening to music mostly. That's mostly what we do in the HomePod or we do do ask it about weather. And um, sometimes you just ask it what time it is because you don't want to like roll over and whack watches or iPhones. Um, But 
I could easily see that one being replaced by a HomePod mini and then taking our second big one downstairs and turning it into a stereo pair, for instance, or my office has nothing. And, and I have to use the music app on my, on my Mac, like an animal or something. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, how do you get used to this? I mean, and yes, I could use Siri, but uh, um, I have to say, I really do have gotten used to playing most of my music on the, on the HomePod. And it's not perfect, um, but it's, it's really good. And I agree that being able to spread it around, around throughout the house is going to be a, is going to be a win. That, yeah, and that sort of was my big takeaway. I, I was waiting for you know two forty nine, because the full home pod is three ninety nine, and so uh, uh, maybe they'll come in at one ninety nine. And when he said ninety nine bucks, I'm going, oh my gosh, really? Yeah, yeah, much, and, and much. I, much I, I feel like this just pretty much guarantees that Apple's going to own the uh, the Christmas season. If well, you. Um, if, you know, People may have not have noticed, but Apple removed all of the third-party speakers and headsets from the Apple stores last week. Yeah. So we yeah. kind of figured there was something coming. Yeah. yeah. And the, there's so much speculation as to whether there will be more things coming because, well, we have more events with the, the alleged Apple Studio headphones. So, you know, the over-the-ear headphones. So we'll see. The um, the one thing I will say, I mean, in my understanding is that is that in this field, in this sort of the smart speaker world, I think Apple is still a fairly distant third behind Amazon's Echo and and the Google Google Home stuff. Um, and you know, and I have to say, it probably depends a little bit on what you do. I mean, you know, for me, I'm really not interested in asking Siri questions. Um, none of these things answer my questions very well. Uh, so it's it's. I just, I just, I usually want to read the answer. I don't want to listen to the answer. So, uh, so that's been, you know, kind of a, a problem there for me. Um, but I think a lot of people have gotten into them and the Amazon Echoes, I think you can get them like for 19 bucks now for the super cheap ones um, on sale sometimes. So, you know, Apple is still, still, still competing uphill in that regard. Plus both Amazon and, um, and Google now have devices that have screens and, you know, uh, not necessarily. I don't necessarily, you know, want one of those uh, constantly showing me things and attracting my attention while I'm trying to cook or something. But uh, you know, I think they're they are popular with some people. Yeah, I, I, the screen thing intrigues me. Um, I've got an Echo Show Five that I got, you know, as in a box of Cracker Jacks or something, and <laughs> you know, I I haven't figured out what it's good for. I mean, you know, it, it has a cy- constantly cycling thing about, you know, here's the latest news. Here's, here's you know, how to cook, oh, no, how to cook no, a no, pizza. No, no. Don't want and, any news. No news. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there's that. But, you know, is, so it's it's kind of been, an, I mean, I was kind of curious to see, gee, well, I like this or not. And it's like, I don't know what to do with it. Um, the, yeah. the, the echoes, I mean, boy, you can really get me going on that because, yeah, they're responsive and, and arguably a little better than Siri at some recognition. But A, I also am not sure I'm not being spied on. And B, that is the absolute last thing I want to listen to any music on. I mean, a 1965 oh, yeah. AM radio <laughs> Volkswagen sounded better. So, you know. With push that's, buttons. That, yeah. So that's why I'm excited about, about the HomePod Mini. If I want to go and listen to some, really sit down and listen to music, I'll go and get a really dedicated set of speakers. I've got some really nice um, audio engines back here. But f- to have the the podcasts or music throughout the house wherever i happen to be and to be able to tell it hey i want you to play this uh, yeah. that's that's a game changer yeah the the, the home pod mini probably won't sound quite as good no one of course knows this but we don't we don't it just just was announced but it probably won't sound quite as good as the original home pod um for two reasons one is that it simply doesn't have it's, it's not big enough to have the same amount of stuff in there um, so in terms of like seven independent tweeters and all that, that the home pod had, those aren't in the, in the home pod mini. Um, and then, uh, secondly, uh, it doesn't have quite the same level of processing. So one of the things the home pod can do is it has this concept of spatial awareness. So if you put it in the corner of your room, it knows it's there and sends them and sends the, the music out, um, into the room rather than into the wall. So that's really clever as well. So the HomePod Mini won't be quite as good in those regards. The one advantage it has over the HomePod is very unknown at the moment. It has something called the U1 chip, Apple's, Apple's U1 chip. And what that gives you is ultra wideband, um, uh, which helps with uh, proximity sensing. 
So you can take your, your, your iPhone, say you're playing music on your iPhone, and you can walk over to a HomePod and you can put it next to the HomePod and the music will transfer. And that happens now with current iPhones and current HomePods. What apparently the U1 chip will somehow enable later this year, Apple says, is a better handoff experience. We don't know what that means. We just have no idea. Um, they didn't say in the announcement. Um, they didn't clarify about it at all. So that's the that's the one thing. The, the original HomePod does not have a U1. So it apparently will not have a better handoff experience. I've handed off stuff to my HomePods like four times to test, and that's it. So I don't see this as a big deal. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm like you, we, and none of us know. But I have to say that I've recently... Since um since iOS 14 and my my AirPods Pro, which I'm not wearing tonight, but um, since definitely since iOS 14, I feel like the whole handoff thing or the switching between uh, devices has gotten so much better, and it does mm. seem to really yeah. know. Okay, I'm 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 talking on the phone. The phone calls over. I want to watch something on my iPad. I fire that up, and the audio transfers over. And you know, I never touched it. And yeah. and it it does that so well now that I'm really optimistic about this feature and and what it can mean for us. We'll see. So we will. We will see. We will see. All right. So, okay. So we're so, done now, right? Um, we don't have anything more to talk about. Well, <laughs> just one or two little things. So. Which which iPhone 12 are you getting, Adam? Well, oh man. Okay, so we got not one, not two, not three, but four iPhone 12 models, which is a step up. I mean, previous, I mean, last year we had three. We had the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. Um, and so we got four this year, and happily we got the baby bear model, the the iPhone 12 Mini. Uh, I cannot believe I have been banging this drum for so many years. Um, yeah, it's a small iPhone. And if I were going to buy an iPhone, it would probably be the iPhone a 12 mini. The problem is I have an iPhone 11 Pro. And, you know, I just don't know how they compare. Um, and, and particularly from the camera standpoint, because that's, let's face it, the place where Apple makes the biggest innovations and is doing the most work is in the cameras um, and particularly on the pro line of the iPhone iPhone 12 pros the pro and the pro max um, but I have the I have the three camera iPhone 11 pro and so I what I don't know is would I be going backwards if I went to the iPhone 12 mini which is only a two camera system and and I mean I think in some respects obviously I would be because I'd have one less camera to be able to because it's the wide ultra wide and uh, and telephoto combination I wouldn't have the telephoto so yes you know, so that would be a hit but there's also all the computational stuff that Apple's doing that um, that behind the scenes and that's where it starts to become just like we'll have to wait and see until the comparison photos start coming out. You know that I'm sure that all the digital photography sites are, you know, they've 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 they're they're, they're ready to hit the pre-order button on Friday morning as soon as they can because they want to get and, and get these and do those exact shots. Well, this is what the iPhone 11 does, and the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 12 Mini, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and you know, so you can actually see the difference. That's the only way to test this stuff at this point. There's no way to know based on the specs whether it's how it's going to be. I mean, we just don't. So, but that said, boy, I really want, I really want something a little smaller. I mean, I happen to have here, um, so this is my, my iPhone 11 Pro. This is next to it is um, an iPhone 7. And they're, they're pretty big. They're pretty, you know, there's a pretty, pretty big difference there. And the iPhone 7, if I, um, I believe the mini is smaller um, than the iPhone 7. It's just a hair, it's like a quarter inch taller and wider than the first generation iPhone SE, which was the last squared off one. So that was our last really small iPhone. I know people who will not give that thing up um, because they, it's, what, it's what fits their hands and what fits their pockets. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Linode. Get started building your website today with $100 in free credit for Mac Voices viewers and listeners at linode.com slash macvoices. If you're just getting started building a website for the first time, then you need Linode. If you're an old hand at websites, Linux servers, and cloud-hosted applications, you need Linode. And if you're anything in between, 
You need Linode. How can one service answer all the questions and serve all the needs? Linode are server experts who make it easy to get started and who can help you with your most sophisticated needs. Would a managed Kubernetes cluster meet your needs? Linode will help you get it up and running. Don't even know what a Kubernetes cluster is? Don't worry. Linode is still for you, right down to a simple WordPress installation. I've been impressed with everything about Linode, their service, their pricing, and their cloud-based dashboard, and I know you will be too. That's why I want you to visit linode.com slash macvoices right now. Mac Voices viewers and listeners get $100 credit when they visit linode.com slash macvoices and click the Create Free Account button to get started. That's linode.com slash macvoices for $100 credit and your new free account. linode.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. One way you might determine whether it's a good idea or not, and I can't take credit for this, Gary Malpaz was on another show with me, and he, while they were doing the announcement, he was doing an analysis of, analysis of his uh, photo library uh, using the metadata so he could tell how many pictures he took with the with the wide with the ultra wide with hmm. the telephoto hmm. and you know he's using that to say okay this is how i use my oh. camera photo Clever. I, my, yeah my, <laughs> i know i mean it's brilliant i never thought it's about so, doing that it, it's so obvious um but he you know okay this is what i use the camera and the way i use it and now which which one suits my needs, or do I really need to go high end, or do do I never use uh-huh. my my telephoto? So yeah, 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 that was that was brilliant. Well, and and to, and to be honest, you know, like so, I have this iPhone 11 Pro, which I got it last year, right when it came out, and um, one of the things I did was take um, action shots of cross country races. And so runners moving quickly, um, and I, ne- I needed to be able to take bursts, um, which Apple made much, much harder in iOS 13, and I had to actually get an app, an app that made it easier. Um, and honestly, I wasn't very impressed with the photos. They weren't that good, you know, and I don't think I was doing anything wrong. I mean, I had a, um, I had a, a monopod, actually, I wasn't a tripod, but I was holding the camera still, and some of them I had really, I mean, it, it, you could really tell when a cloud went over. Um, that if the cloud went over, it wasn't bright sunny. The pictures got noticeably worse, and then one race towards the end, it was just a, a cloudy, a cloudy dark day, and the pictures were distinctly worse. So you know, it was one of those things where Apple shows those photos during the during the keynotes. You're like, oh my gosh, those are so amazing. Yeah, well, I want to see them out there taking pictures of a cross country race, and, and you know, and and show me just how wonderful they are. Um, and yeah, maybe you can do it, but maybe not. And so we'll see. But one of the things that they did talk about in the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max is they've now got this um, LiDAR scanner. So it's actually, um, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a light detection and sort of bouncing light waves off of, off of things. And that gives better depth perception to, um, to make autofocus faster and, um, and also to improve the quality in night mode. So I actually had some hope that the pro models might do better in that sports photography use case. Uh, but again, we won't see until we can actually try them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to say, since you brought up the mini right off the bat, that I think the mini owned the coolest thing about the whole, the whole uh, presentation. And that was the three case introduction with the James Bond music. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, that was brilliant. You know, it, it was yeah. fun and it was brilliant. Yeah, there weren't there weren't there weren't quite as many funny little bits in this one as that as there were in the previous uh, thing that the previous uh, event that Apple did for the iPad Air and um, iPad and Apple Watch Series Six. They had these the, the, like these zooming shots through Apple Campus, um, and and Craig Frederighi, who's the you know VP of software, I guess, um, w- would be like caught walking down a hallway and he'd see the camera and like duck away um which was it was it was really clever you know took half a second out of, out of the whole thing there wasn't quite as much of that sort of um a little amusements uh but the but as chuck said when they introduced the ipad mini they started they started with the iphone 12 sort of the, the mama bear ma, mama bear size and um and then it's like oh and here i have this thing and she goes over to a podium where there's this stainless steel suitcase and she snaps it open there's another stainless steel suitcase she snaps it open and all the all the time the the james bond music is playing so you can just imagine q doing this and then the third suitcase he snaps it open and there sitting there is the iphone 12 mini so yeah it was it was a great reveal and uh and you know and and really yeah i mean 
kind of made the point also that you know you know we have the pro max we have the you know the the the, uh, the pro and the iphone 12 and then we have the mini at the at the third size so it was a good a good way of uh, hammering that home yeah one of the things i found and, interesting is during some of the, the the video and the movies they played they had really big people holding this tiny phone in their hand and it reminded me of the uh, Vern Troyer Yao Ming commercials with the 12 inch and the 17 inch. <laughs> so yeah. one of the uh, funny story on the other side of the spectrum, um, I, there was a friend of mine at Google once was telling me this is years and years ago when we were just starting to get into, this is actually back in the days of small phones and they were just starting to get bigger. And, um, and one of the things he said actually is there was this weird trend, I guess, I don't know quite what to call it, or belief um, in Asia that, that young women were buying these huge phones because when they held the phone up to their head, it made their heads look smaller. And that was seen as making them more attractive, I guess. I was just like, seriously? <laughs> Anyone thinks that way? All right. Um, but, uh, you know, so, but I, you know, I, I did not anticipate where, how big the phones have gotten, you know, back then, how big they would get. And, uh, and it's just, I'm so happy to see it going back. And partly, you know, I mean, I like it smaller, but, um, but I just have to say like, um, my wife, Tanya, who many of you have, have met, um, she's five, three, she's a small person. She doesn't want she, I mean, she's she actually got the iPhone SE um, because she'd been, you know, struggling along with the seven before, and you know, it was the same size that she wasn't really happy about, but it was at least not any bigger. So, Adam, I just wanted to um, make uh, make a point to everybody that you know I have an iPhone eight plus, and the screen is five point five inches. Yes, and and the mini is five point four inches. Yes. So the screen size is almost the same as the A+, plus, but obviously they're making the, the body smaller because they're doing edge to edge and everything like that. So, yeah, you know, if I were to get maybe an, a new iPhone, you know, the mini wouldn't be that much different uh, right. in screen size than what I have now with an A+. Plus. That's a great point. And actually, the other thing to keep in mind is the screens on these are astonishing. So the mini, in fact, has the highest um, dot pitch, basically the, you know, the, the highest re- uh, pixels per inch of any of them. I think it's like 478 pixels per inch. Um, and so what that means is, is that you know, the higher your, your higher your dot pitch, the crisper everything is going to be. So these are going to be really, really you know, gorgeous screens. Um, yeah, I was I was noticing that too. I was looking at it in the other direction actually, which is you know the new mini is only like I said a quarter of an inch um, uh, taller and wider than the old iPhone SE, the, the small one. But that old iPhone SE had a four inch screen, so it's got a one point four inch larger diagonal screen in a case that's only a hair bigger. So very right. as I, I mean the engineering that goes into this. I mean. I think we've become a little blasé sometimes like, Oh yeah, it's an iPhone. That's not that great. These things are freaking magic. I mean, what Apple is doing here, it's astonishing. I mean, every now and then you have to sit back and think about this a little bit. Like how do they do that? How do they shoehorn all this stuff in there? It's just amazing what they can do. Um, so yeah, it's, we have to, you have to actually every now and then, you know, get your, stop being jaded and just like, appreciate the the enormity of the engineering effort that goes in well said well said at this point uh folks any questions comments from you all uh who's buying new iphones which one appealed to you nobody's buying new iphones yeah if i were going to buy one i i may just stick with the um the 12 mini yeah because it's basically the same size of what i have why spend you know all the money for the other ones when you know, they're all going to do the same thing, basically. I'm now, not a professional photographer, <laughs> but I, I do take a lot of pictures. But um, these cameras are still pretty good if you're taking stills and things like that. So so the one thing I did, I, and I ran into this when I was writing up the article um, like yesterday. Um, keep in mind, these days are, are hellish for us. So, you know, we watch a 75-minute presentation talk about it for a little bit and then have, you know, then it write 2,400 words, write and edit 2,400 words about something that, you know, like I'm trying to 
chase down every imaginable detail. Um, I'm surprised we don't make many more mistakes than we do. We definitely made a couple. Um, the upgrade decision on these is a little tricky, right? I mean, uh, I, you know, I'm praising these things to the skies. I think Apple's done a great job. These are uh, no question. These are the best phones. I think the mini yeah. is brilliant, but the upgrade decision is tricky. So I've got an iPhone 11 pro. Why should I upgrade? I mean, is it, is one yeah. of these really that much better? Probably not. I mean, this thing, cause I had to get the 256. I think it was like 1100 bucks last year. I want some more. I want to get more money out of this puppy. Um, and you know, so, so, okay. The 11s. Yeah. I think that's a little bit of a hard, a hard upgrade decision to make the 10 R and 10 S still feels like it's on the edge. I mean, those are, those are pretty good, pretty good, pretty good phones. I think the 10 is actually your sweet spot. And I'll tell you why, because it's a face ID phone. Um, and it's the oldest face ID phone with, you know, it's, it's got decent cameras and everything like that, but it's, it's going to be as farthest you back and face ID is a problem right now because we're all wearing masks. So if you've got an iPhone eight plus like you do, Ken, you got touch ID, you know, Who's going to give up a touch ID phone right now? <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you go out, if you're, if you're going out, you know, much at all, face ID is a royal pain in the butt. Um, and so I wouldn't recommend that anyone upgrade from a, from like an iPhone eight right now. Um, if they're, if they're relying on touch ID and using touch ID a lot. Um, yeah. The iPhone SE that just came out, the second generation one, Tanya got one of those. Yeah. Um, she likes it. Touch ID again sure the new ones are great but touch id yeah george yeah uh i was looking to get uh, i really wasn't looking to get a new ipad but mine is uh my uh my ipad goes out of warranty you know with the two-year apple care this uh this coming december and uh i thought the price was good for the new uh, uh for the new 2020 ipad the uh 10.2 so uh <laughs> That's what I elected to go for, not the 32, but the 128. Uh, you know, a, a 32, 64, they're almost useless to me. But I went with that, and I thought it was good. But uh, I just downloaded this. I don't know if you can see it. The uh, SpaceX just uh, launched successfully, oh. and they land. They landed the first stage on the uh, on the little on the little barge. So that probably brings SpaceX up to about 800 satellites up there. They got the OK with the FCC uh, to put in the bid for the uh, uh, the LEO, which is good for satellites because of the, what they did in Washington State. And uh, can you imagine where Apple would be if Apple and SpaceX got together in the beginning? I mean, that, I mean, Apple would be like the crown jewel of the planet by this time, you know. Yeah. But anyway, I, I just wanted to break that into you. But if you're in the northern latitudes, uh, SpaceX is going to be pretty hot. I know I put it for it. My brother put it for it uh, for the uh, beta beta test. So I'll let everybody know in the user group uh, how that works out. Sorry to break into that, but well, I thought that was kind of new. Yeah. Actually, actually, yeah. so a little bit of a segue here because I mean, what SpaceX yeah. is doing in part is is this you know is internet communications. Um, the really big thing that Apple spent a ton of time on um, at these announcements was five G. And and. And they were just they were just going on and on. I mean, it turns and that was sort of the, the you know high speed was oh we've added five G to all the iPhone twelves, and they brought the CEO of Verizon on and um, and I have to say, wow, am I underwhelmed? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, five G is gonna be great. It's gonna be essential in one, two, five, ten years, whatever. But the fact is, is that right now I don't believe a word they say. Um, you know, in terms of the coverage, I don't believe that the real world performance is going to be there. I mean, the guy's going on about four gigabits per second under ideal conditions. Yeah, come on. We've done networking before, folks. There's never <laughs> ideal conditions. And when Apple's talking about one gigabits and, and in typical conditions, again, I don't believe it. They don't live out here in upstate New York where, you know, we're sometimes lucky to get a cell signal much, at all, much less, uh, much less, you know, 4G or maybe even 5G. 
um, it's coverage. That, it's I that think one is gonna... street corner when you're standing under the antenna. Yeah. The yeah. one thing I do like about it is they <laughs> it's not a higher price. Uh, right. I think some of Samsung's 5G phones have oh. a higher price than the 4G phones. Interesting. Yeah. So no, that's great. And as a, great. this is Apple. Apple does this really well, actually, which is sometimes they get into a technology before it's there. And because Apple has got into it, now that they, they break the chicken and egg conundrum for the rest of the industry. So Verizon made all these announcements. And again, there, there, I mean, like one of, one of my Tibbetts talk readers who lives in New York City was, was wildly unamused when they were talking about how you know, Verizon has their 5G ultra wideband service in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. She was like, yeah, I live in New York. We can't even get decent normal service out of them. You know, they keep promising and not actually delivering. You know, so, they're trying to take advantage of, you know, uh, you know, people who really don't know the difference between 4G and 5G or 6G. Yeah. Oh, this is the greatest thing. And even though it's not ready for prime time, oh, this is a selling point and people yeah. are going to buy it just because of that. Now, to be fair, as I said, 5G is real. It's going to be a big deal. Um, but it's going to take time to get a build out. So, right. so 5G is a higher frequency, um, which means that it, it's, it doesn't, the waves don't travel as far and they don't penetrate as well. And so the combination of those two mean that you need a lot more, not really towers, but base stations, basically. The idea is you might put base stations on telephone poles, um, not every telephone pole, but, but certainly much closer than you would for the you know, 3G or 4G. Um, networking, and so and the and the throughput really will be there eventually. The capacity will be there eventually, and at some point, it's going to be absolutely essential that we have this. We're going to, you know, Apple's going to come out with AR glasses um, or something like that, where suddenly we actually do need some fairly real throughput um, while we're walking around, yeah. and um, and so as I said, this is a good first step, but yeah, I can't see it making a Hardly no. any difference to hardly anyone in the real world right now. Does, then you have anybody, people. Say you have people know that, okay. Go ahead, George. <laughs> I was going to say you still have people up here in New York that are on Usenet. Yes. You know, like the RVs, and then and they're lucky if they get any signal at all. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, if you know, you know, they're putting up all these beacons. Do the different phone carriers share these beacons or does each phone carrier have to put up their own? I believe that each carrier has to do their own. This is not one of those. I mean, they're, they're, the, it is possible that the carriers may have, um, what are they called? Oh, I'm blanking slightly. Um, sub-brands in essence that will piggyback on, on a network. So, you know, uh, Cricket, for instance, I think um, right. piggybacks on AT&T. Um, but but no, AT and T and Verizon won't be sharing those. Yeah. You know, I have um, Spectrum, and they sh they use the Verizon network. Yeah, yeah. yeah at least not in, at least not until Congress tells them they have to share. Yeah, which right. you know. I, I, but I want to put a plug in, I guess, for the fact that the five G was included. I mean, I, I I didn't see any percentage in Apple not including it. Uh, I mean that that means now these phones are. They represent. They don't represent. You know, another that they're going to go out of out of. Um, oh, what's the word? I guess not exactly obsolete, but they're not going to be seen as second class citizens if and when five G does come along and in, in a widespread fashion. And that might be two years, three years, four years. But how many of you are rocking? You know, phones that are that old. So yeah. you will be able to take advantage. And I don't know what it costs to put 5G in, but certainly all the analysts and all the geeks, you know, well, this this is great. And so I think Apple avoided a ton of questionable press or yes. questioning press. Yes. Had they including, not done it, had yes, they if not they, done it, it would have been a problem. It would have been a big problem. And and it was brilliant. They, it's across the whole line. So, Adam, if you get your mini or if I get a uh, an, an, uh, 12 Max, 12 Pro Max, they all have it, so we're set. Of course, now I did have a come. customer today ask me what 5G was and why Apple invented it. Because <laughs> <laughs> they made such a big point out of 5G. There's a lot of gravity involved. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, and why? I mean, how did Verizon, of all the companies, end up on the, on the phone or on the stage? Sorry, who was that? Somebody said Bloomberg. <laughs> I heard him. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if I'm muted, muted or not. No, no, you're good. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, I read a Bloomberg story that said that T-Mobile simply renamed their 4G service yeah. 5G. Yeah, Apple or so AT&T did, did some, you something take similar. Take your Apple iPhone um, to the T-Mobile store. Don't believe them. Yeah. It's, not, it's not the speed of the 5G that we're expecting. It's simply a renamed 4G. And, that, and so now all the other carriers have to put a little star after the five that it, or it'll be Verizon 5G plus it, it really was a dastardly move that they made but T-Mobile made that move a year ago AT&T has done something very similar so they're that, broadcasting the they have 5G but they don't yeah uh, as I said, you know, it, it will take some time to work its way out. And I do worry that those of us in uh, more rural parts of upstate New York uh, are, are going to be not seeing this for years to come anyway. That wraps up the first part of our discussion with the Apple Cider user group and Adam Angst about some of Apple's recent announcements. Next time, we continue part of the discussion with 5G, get into some questions and answers from the group and a whole lot more. That's next time on Mac Voices. Come back and join us. Until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.